Hello guys, welcome to WMD Tech and today we will be reviewing the Techware Nexus EVO white version and special thanks to Techware Philippines for sponsoring this video. Techware Nexus EVO is already at the market and currently priced at 2,190 pesos for the black version and 2,320 pesos for the white version. So let's unbox our Techware Nexus EVO and check out the features and how it will perform. Unboxing our Techware Nexus EVO is pretty straightforward. Nothing special in the box but the case comes with three free 120mm fans and plastic pouch for the screws. As for the specs and features of our case, for the I.O., we have one super speed USB 3.0 and two HD audio plus USB 2.0. For our drive bay support, you can add up to two 3.5 inch hard disk drive. You can also add two 2.5 inch SSD and also seven PCIe expansion slots. For the fan support, you can add up to two 120 millimeter, which is included on the front. You can also add two 120 or 140 millimeter for the top and for the rear, you can have one 120 millimeter fan which is included as well and for our support and clearance it supports atx micro atx and itx motherboards it also has 350 millimeter maximum gpu card length and 160 millimeter maximum cpu cooler height and 120 millimeter psu clearance and for the dimension of the techware nexus evo we have 405 mm for the length, we have 201 mm for the width, and 435 mm for the height, and it weighs 5.5 kilograms. And as for the features of the Techware Nexus EVO, it has a clear tempered glass side panel, it also has a magnetic filter on the top panel, it also has a power supply magnetic filter in a chamber with routing holes, it also comes with one ARGB LED strip with Molex connection on the front panel. We also have side air vents and a dedicated RGB button at the bottom of the front panel. And by the way, if you haven't seen my time-lapse video on this case, make sure to watch that video to have an idea on the things I experienced when putting up the parts on this case. There are a lot of things that needs to improve on the Techware Nexus EVO, but this case also packs a lot of good features. First, it's really nice to see a USB 3.0 for a budget case like this. As we all know, Techware is one of the company who offers solid options in terms of I.O. for their cases. And for people who are looking for a case that won't cost you too much, Techware Nexus EVO is a good looking choice for people who are tight on budget. It comes with the three included fans, which is a really good deal considering its price. Another feature of the Techware Nexus EVO is the budget-friendly layout, especially the clearance for the backside panel for cable management. Cable management on this case is really good and I didn't have to squeeze all those cables just to close the back panel. It also has a magnetic dust filter on the top and PSU bottom area, but unfortunately on the front panel it doesn't have any removable filter. Just the metal mesh that's attached on the front panel. Removing the front panel is also easy. Kindly watch my time-lapse video on how I did it. Overall, for the clearances on this case is good, but the case is a bit compact for an ATX build, so there's no room for an AIO at the top if you are using an ATX motherboard. So I installed the Deep Cool Castle 240 RGB version 2 on the front and had the orientation like this because the tubes are making contact with the backplate of my graphics card, which is not good. But aside from the limited space inside, other areas like front, back, and bottom area have a really good clearances. If you are using an air cooler, make sure to check the height of the cooler you will be using is 160mm below. Building experience on this case is really easy and smooth, but again, if you have an ATX motherboard, you might need to consider what cooler you need to use or what you will use or the number of fans you can use. For the bottom area, PSU area has a good clearance to stack some cables if you're not using a modular power supply. On the drive base, you need to use some screws similar to the back panel to secure your hard disk drive. And for your SSD, you can put it inside where you can see two trays for the SSD. But all in all, this case would be a good option for people who doesn't like big cases. For the airflow performance, even though this case is a bit compact, the temperatures are quite good compared to other cases from Techware. Before we check the results of the temperature, I would like to remind you that the front panel only have side vents 
for the airflow. The top and the bottom area of the front panel are blocked with plastic which is unfortunate. It would be really good if they left those area open for better air intake. Anyway, for the performance on airflow, I was really surprised how the Techware Nexus EVO performed. There are some cases that even though you are using an AIO, the airflow isn't that good like the Techware Neo. As you can see, the idle temperature isn't that great on stock speed but for gaming and full load, Techware Nexus EVO delivers a really good performance. On overclocking at 3.9GHz, the idle is not that great as well and we've seen a significant increase on full load but in gaming, my GTX 1060 Aorus still has a good temperatures even though the Deepcool Castle 240 RGB version 2 is pulling hot air inside the case. Overall, for the airflow and air circulation, Techware Nexus EVO performs really well but I think if they added more intake at the top and the bottom area of the front panel and more clearance inside the case, this would have been a really good choice for a budget case considering that it doesn't have a mesh front panel. As for the quality and structure, Techware Nexus EVO is built really solid. Both sides are made from metal and the front panel is a combination of plastic and metal. The tempered glass side panel has a good structure as well and the screws for the side panel is a bit short but it gets the job done and holds the tempered glass side panel really well. Most of the part of this case is made from metal which is really good but it's not that heavy so it's also good when you move this case from one room to another like mine. I really like the design as well since you have two options for the colors. The white color is really awesome and it gives you that RGB vibe while having a minimalist design. In conclusion, for the price of 2190 for the black Nexus Evo and 2320 for the white version, you can get a really good case with a solid structure, design, and airflow performance. But due to the release of the Techware Alpha that has a mesh front panel and a larger case, you can consider that case since it's around 2,400 pesos only. You can also consider Techware M1 for micro ATX and compact builds. But overall, Techware Nexus Evo is still a pretty good choice if you want a minimalist design with some touch of RGB goodness. The overall quality, design, and structure of the Nexus Evo is really good and comparable to other cases of Techware Philippines which is really nice that Techware always provide a solid quality cases, not just the aesthetics and hype, but the consistency as well. And lastly, for the airflow performance, you've seen the results of our test and the Nexus Evo performs really well on stock speed, but if you're planning to overclock, I suggest either go with Techware Alpha or other cases from Techware like Vision and Vega for better air circulation. And that's it guys for a review of the Techware Nexus white version. So if you like this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if I forgot something or you have some questions, just comment down below and I will try to address that. And also support our channel by using our Lazada and Amazon affiliate. And as always, happy gaming!